rejoice and log in. Enter, rejoice and log in. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice and log in. If you have a chalice at home or a candle, it would be great if you would have that now and we'll light it together. We light, light this flame as, as a symbol of new life, enlightening our, our way, as a symbol of the warmth in every human heart. Let the lighting of this flame rekindle in us the inner light of hope, of peace, of love. May we share that light with all people. Good morning. I am Marie Luna, the Director of Congregational Life. I am so glad you are joining us this morning. It is good to be together, even when we have to be physically apart. If you are joining us from another Unitarian Universalist congregation, welcome. If you are visiting us for the first time, I want to extend you a special welcome. I will put my email address in the chat box I hope that you reach out so I can help you learn more about our congregation and get connected. Today's service is being led and supported by Reverend Christina Leon Tracy, our senior minister, Reverend Leah Angiri, our associate minister, Ali Peters, our intern minister, Steve Seek, our music director, our wonderful singers and musicians. Leah Thibodeau, our worship leader, Meredith Mason, and Adam Robinson, our AV tech. Thank you to all who made this morning service possible. Just a reminder that our Sunday services are made up of pre-recorded videos. So you might see our staff both on the screen and in the gallery. If you find you are having issues with your video, here are a couple things that you might want to try. First, try turning off your device's video camera to see if that improves your home bandwidth. If that doesn't help, try logging off and logging back in. And if neither of those work, please recognize that technology is never perfect and we are doing our best. If you would like, you can always watch the service in its entirety later on our YouTube channel. This morning service is a special interactive service. We hope that if you have children at home, they will join us so we can all have fun together. There will be lots of moments for interaction today. This year, we are focusing on growing resilience. We are digging into what it means to grow ourselves and our community to be sources of life, even when things get tough. Right now, we are in the weeks of our, of our theme, A Community of Embrace. Thank you for joining us as we practice what it means to embrace each other and our wider world, to hold each other, even from a distance. So I now invite you to settle in to your space, wherever you are, setting aside your week in whatever way you can, so that we can be together fully even from afar. I'd like to tell you a story. 
This is a story I wrote called Aaliyah and Francis. Aaliyah was an active little girl. She went to the Unitarian Universalist Church in Philadelphia, where she lived with her moms. She loved to ride her bike in the park, go for nature walks, listen to music, and she really loved to write, especially poetry. She also knew, because she learned from her family and from her UURE program, that it was important to help people and make the world more fair. If you have any children nearby, ask them what they learn in our RE program and type it into the chat box. One day, when the air was getting chilly and the leaves were starting to turn red and orange and gold like they are right now, she was riding her bike through the park well, her moms told her it was called a cemetery, but there were trees and grass and flowers all over the place. There were also these big stones everywhere that were in different shapes. Some were flat on the ground, some were big and tall, some had carvings of people or angels or other designs. But to Aaliyah, it was just a quiet, beautiful place where she could explore. Aaliyah had been thinking a lot lately. Some of the girls in her class were not being kind to another kid in their class. They were making fun of him for the way he looked, the way he talked, and for his religion. She was bothered by this, but she didn't know what to do. She was also feeling pretty nervous because her school was hosting a poetry contest and she really wanted to enter the contest. But she didn't think any of her poems were good enough. She was going for a ride through the park, or whatever it was called, to clear her mind and to think. She got off her bike, leaving it near the pathway, and she decided to explore further around knowing the weather was soon going to be cold and she wouldn't have this opportunity for much longer. She saw two big stones near each other. One looked very old and rough and she could hardly make out the letters carved in the well-worn rock. The other nearby looked newer, like a slanted block and, and she could read the words engraved on it. She sat down nearby, looking at the clouds, noticing the trees and how they were changing. She wondered how old they were. She wondered what these stones were. Kids, what do you think they are? Type or have your grown-ups type into the chat box your guess what you think these stones are. Any guesses? If you guessed that they were gravestones, you're correct. Sometimes when people die, their bodies are buried in the ground so that the body, which isn't alive, so it doesn't have any feelings or thoughts anymore, it can return to the earth. People put stones to mark where the person's body was buried and people like to go visit those stones to remember the person. These stones that Aaliyah was visiting happened to be the grave of someone who died over 109 years ago, a woman named Frances Ellen Watkins Harper. The other stone nearby looked newer, but it also had her name on it. It said that she was an abolitionist a speaker, and a writer. Wow, said Aaliyah, a writer. I wonder if she wrote poetry. Did I write poetry, said a voice. Aaliyah turned, and at first she didn't see anything. Who's there? Me, Francis, 
You asked if I ever wrote poetry. You bet I did. As Aaliyah stared into the cool fall air, her eyes began to see the outline of an old woman with crinkles around her eyes, smiling at her. What did you write about? asked Aaliyah, feeling weird and nervous about talking to this see-through spirit person, but also just feeling excited too. I wrote about nature a lot. Um, I also wrote about fairness. You see, I was born to free black parents in Maryland, but slavery was all around us. When I was three years old, I moved here to Philadelphia to live with family because my parents died of sickness. And I learned about all the ways the black people were being treated unfairly in our country. And as I got older, I became a Unitarian. And I started speaking and writing about these things and trying to get laws changed to make our country more fair and safe for everyone especially for people who looked like me. Aaliyah was stunned. A Unitarian? I'm Unitarian Universalist too. I didn't even know there were Unitarians so long ago. Francis nodded and laughed. Yes, even way back then. I guess in that way, little one, I'm one of your religious ancestors. Aaliyah also knew about slavery. Her moms had told her about how horribly black people were treated. She knew too that our country still doesn't always treat black people and white people the same. Her moms talked to her about how she, as a black girl, had to be extra careful in ways that sometimes her white friends didn't have to worry about. She marched with her church in the Black Lives Matter rallies. Aaliyah thought about the little boy in her class, the one that the other girls teased. She suddenly felt sad that she hadn't stood up to them to help him feel more welcome. She told Francis about the boy and the other girls and how she was feeling about it all. What should I do? Frances smiled her crinkly-eyed smile and said, Oh, honey, you have to follow your own heart. Aaliyah didn't feel like that was a good answer, but she thanked Frances for all she had done to help make the world more fair for Black people and for all women and for being brave enough to be a writer and a poet. I want to be a poet she told her. There's a poetry competition at my school soon and I want to enter it. I have to write a poem and read it to everyone and I'm feeling nervous because I don't know if my poems are good enough. Good enough, said Francis, looking a little stern. Girl, you need to believe in yourself. You and your work are definitely good enough to try to enter that contest but maybe you need some more inspiration to feel like your words are making a difference. Don't worry, you won't see me, but I'll be nearby to help you find your words. And just like that, Francis disappeared. Aaliyah blinked her eyes several times, but nope, not even a faint outline of the old woman who had been there moments before. On her bike ride home from the cemetery, she would never call it a park again, Aaliyah decided she needed to do something bold. We will come back to our story in a moment, but as we listen to the music and sing along, I invite you to vote for what you think Frances should do next in our interactive story. Do you think she should write a poem about fairness to encourage fairness for the little boy? Or do you think she should befriend the little boy and write a poem with him? At the end of this song's verse, which isn't very long, we will hear the rest of the story based on your choice. 